everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. About two weeks into the rehearsal process, I knew I had to have some sort of video documentation of this production and this project. I brought my camera with me and I vlogged closing night. So this video is essentially a love letter to Matilda the Musical. Pink shirt me will be popping in every once in a while to help make this video a little more... Ooh, coherent. I love filming videos, but uh, my top priority closing night was actually being an actor. My top priority was not a YouTube video, so a lot of my footage is kind of disjointed. So I'll be popping in every once in a while to help make this video easier to follow along, and I hope you enjoy. I am in Matilda the Musical. There are many great characters in Matilda the Musical. I am playing Matilda's abusive mother, Mrs. Wormwood. We got the nice pregnancy face. Um, <laughs> we got good times with the fam. The night they took the candidates, my wig fell off. So we got lots of funky wig photos. Currently, uh, my room is kind of a mess. You can't really see it right now, but I did try to set up the background cute. I got the rest of my Christmas lights to light up. In the background, we have some fun things. We have this little frog. His name is Benji. And we have, we have these really pretty flowers that my girlfriend got me because she came and saw the show opening night. Matilda the Musical ran for four nights. We had previews on Wednesday the 13th, opened on Thursday, and had shows all the way through Sunday. Sunday show being a matinee. Basically, I was exhausted. This YouTube video probably would have been up sooner if I didn't wake up the morning after closing night with no voice. I lost my voice for two days straight. A current update on how I'm doing physically? My hair is very greasy. I don't have the heart to wash it because I wear a wig cap. No one sees it anyway. I have massive bruises on my knees. These shorts that I've been wearing for the past three days to the theater. My socks have Fozzie Bear on them. Waka Waka. On opening night, I put on a full set of pink press on nails. I have one left. It was at this point where I decided that I should probably start actually getting ready to go to the theater. Mrs. Wormwood is very much a almost parody of femininity. Any way you can emphasize that with makeup is important. Her makeup is <laughs> a lot. People tell me I look like a drag queen. Well, my friends said I look like a drag. So I needed them to see the shoes. What's a drag queen? <laughs> Welcome to the Mrs. Wormwood makeup tutorial. And keep in mind that not only does Mrs. Wormwood wear a lot of makeup as a character and a person, but this is also stage makeup, so it's even worse. I started by just applying my regular foundation and powder. I used L'Oreal True Match Foundation and L'Oreal True Match Powder. The powder and the foundation that I use are not the same shade. They're also definitely both expired. Next, I take the NYX White Jumbo eye pencil in the color milk. I took a bobby pin and used it to just scrape out the pigment and just put it on my eyes. Covering my entire eyelid going all the way up to my eyebrow. I used the NYX Professional Makeup Ultimate Shadow Palette. I took a mix of this purple shade and this pink shade and just, just packed it on my eyelids. And then I took the darkest purple shade using a slightly fluffier brush and I used this for my crease. Next, it's time to add some highlighter. I used the Wet n Wild highlighting powder. I just took a, another brush and packed this in the inner corner of my eyes. Just gave myself a really thick eyeliner with some fat wings. I love doing eyeliner. I think I've gotten really good at it in the past couple years. The eyeliner that I will swear on until the day I die. Maybelline Master Precise All Day Liquid Liner. I don't have blush. I just pulled out this eyeshadow palette again and I mixed the oranges and the pinks on a blush brush and just used that on my cheeks. Next I put on false eyelashes and some highlighter on my cheekbones and the tip of my nose. This side's less blended but that's the side where I wear my wig. This side is less blended, but that's the side where I wear my microphone and I have to take off a patch of makeup for it. Anyway, so we're not gonna fix it. For some reason for this show, instead of getting a bag where I put all of my stuff, I just put all of my junk in the shoe box that my show shoes came in. Including, but not limited to, a headband, some deodorant, and quite a few pads because I started my period that morning. But alas, by that time, it was time to start driving to the theater. Woo! Going to close the night. Beep, beep. Woo! 
I got to the theater with plenty of time to spare before call. It should also be noted that the theater where Matilda was being held happens to be the theater where I had my first dance recital when I was five. For some reason, driving makes me really tired. <laughs> so that's great. Now I'm gonna put on these shoes that I stole from my brother <laughs> to walk into the theater. I almost never put on shoes when I go places. I keep all of my shoes in my car, so I put them on when I get to my destination. I want to show what I bring in my little show box. We have this eyelash box that has my lipsticks in it. We have a pad because I started my period yesterday not having a great time. Mascara, because it occurred to me that I never put mascara on, so there's a very distinct difference between my fake and real eyelashes. A bunch of bobby pins. A headband I usually wear when I put on my makeup, but I just didn't today. This wig cap that I hate because it gives me a headache, but I lost my other one. <laughs> Ran crackers and Ritz crackers, which are comfort foods. We love them. A singular ibuprofen because I borrowed it from a friend yesterday and I just, just put it in my box. So we'll probably be taking that later. One fake press-on nail that I still have. And of course I have my Beetlejuice water bottle, which is broken. Lid doesn't stay on anymore. But I guess it really is just for the aesthetic. So let's go in and, and get mic'd and stuff. The theater was loud. Everybody in the cat, will you help me? As always. Can't spend the night crying on the floor of my bedroom. I was lucky enough to have my own little corner that was kind of dedicated to me. They said of sheer luck that the costume designer hung my costumes in this little corner. I love all of my costumes for the show so much, but you'll get to see them more later when I'm actually wearing them. So I have my own little corner where I had my shoebox, my script, most importantly, my tights and my booty shorts that I leave there every single day because I knew that if I brought them home, I would forget them. I get to wear really funky, shiny tights for this show, and honestly, I kind of dug it. I'm showing all my fits for the day. Okay, that's like really close to you, especially with some Starting with this one. The time to go get mic to fit. <laughs> At that point in time, it was time to go get my microphone and get mic checked. I really like mic checks because I just get to stand there and say all of my lines that I really like. Looks are more important than books. But it also means that you get to go through backstage, which means you get to see all of the fun set pieces and props tables that are backstage. The set design for the show was so good. The set design was so good. Hey everyone, welcome Hi. to Dirty Dan's Juicy Kitchen, where every day we we get barreled. <laughs> Dick's dying halfway in. Dick's dying. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Oh, hey. It's actually a video. Do you want to be in it? Yes. Oh, hey. Hi. Hey. 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 Hi, boy. Hi. You can actually see one of my favorite parts of the set from the sound booth when I was getting mic'd, which is that we had a false proscenium built across the actual proscenium of the stage. But if you look really closely, you can see that going up and down, it says Matilda, and going side to side, it says Revolting. When the lights are down and the audience is actually being brought in and it's not just normal overhead lights, the blocks that have the specific letters to spell out the words glow in black lights, so they're really easy for the audience to find. So then I headed on stage and I got my mic checked. At this theater, we have our mics go across our cheeks. Some theaters will actually put your mic through your hair. After that, all I had to do was go get my pregnancy belly that was still backstage from last night's run and admire my favorite prop before heading backstage to get into costume. My first costume actually leads directly into a quick change. So before I put on my first costume, I put on as many pieces as possible for my main costume. The very first scene that I'm in is the opening song Miracle when I give birth to Matilda. 
Matilda, which means I have to wear a pregnancy belly and a hospital gown. The pregnancy belly is just made out of a pillow, and the pregnancy belly is actually kind of a blast. I think it's so fun to walk around and dance in it and just kind of groove with this pregnancy belly on. The first time I ever put it on for dress rehearsal, a little girl, she's seven years old, she came up to me, she put her hands on the stomach and she made direct eye contact and she goes, I can feel it kicking and then walked away. <laughs> and of course we have my shoes, which are the bane of my actual existence. They're too big on me. They're incredibly painful and they're stuffed with cotton balls and shoe liners. And of course, what we've all been waiting for, the wig. Even if my hair wasn't short, I would probably be wigged for the show because Mrs. Wormwood has a very specific aesthetic. And of course there's Shelby. We named the styrofoam foam head that I keep my wig on, Shelby. All of the kids loved Shelby. The little kids would carry it around like a baby doll. This is Shelby. Shelby's the greatest. Shelby's work. so good. Yeah, Shelby's awesome. Next, it was time for pre-show rituals, which I didn't film because I feel like pre-show rituals are very important and specific for each theater company, especially our closing night. And it was a sentimental moment that I wanted to be there for, not be there for. So, Ugh, I miss the cast. Oh, I miss the cast. Anyway, it was time to start the show. Ah! <laughs> After I give birth, I change into the costume that I wear for the mass majority of the show, which is this crazy piece full of clashing patterns. We have the leopard leggings, and then we have this wrap dress that's very clashy pattern. And then to make it even more clashy, we have this jacket that has this, I guess, floral? I don't know what this pattern would be called. But again, very, very, very clashy when everything is put together. And then we still have the pink high heels and the pink headband and we used to have pink fingernails but they fell off. When it comes to Mrs. Wormwood's costumes, it's very much more cool tones, lots of greens, lots of accents in pink. Clashing patterns is another very big thing. <laughs> I really like all of my costumes because they're tacky and they're ugly, but they're ugly in a way that they fit the character. But they're not so ugly and so cheap that I, as Aiden, feel gross and ugly in them. I actually kind of felt hot in a lot of my costumes, which I'm taking a video because I look hot. I don't know if that's like good for the costume designer or maybe you should actually become a bimbo. If I should be questioning my personal sense of style a little bit. Being vain is fun. Maybe Mrs. Wormwood was right. <laughs> but I really liked all of my costumes. For Loud, which is Mrs. Wimwood's big dance number, I change into a more dancey costume. You all tend to blame yourself now. Come along. That number was so fun. When the dress originally went on me, there was none of the ruffles or the glitter. All of that was hand sewn on by a mom volunteer. So we love that. The dress itself is actually too small for me because it was too tight around my so shoulders. So to combat this, our costume designer cut off the sleeves and sew them onto a separate shirt. So I put the dress part on over top so it looks like one piece but it's actually two pieces and I had a lot more mobility with my arms. I felt really hot, I'm not even gonna lie. And it had a fantastic twirl, so spinny and so fun. And I had this massive feather hair piece that I wore in my hair. This run's going really well. It's going so good. I'm so happy. This is how we're closing the show. We just did loud and it went really well. Like my best friend, like period. I'm feeling so good. I'm feeling so good. Like knock on wood, but this performance is going so good. I'm really happy we're ending it like this. I feel really good about it. And I love this cast so much and I love our director. And oh my God, I almost cried. After loud, I changed back into my day-to-day -day clothes for one scene at the beginning of act two. I'm currently editing this video and it occurred to me that when I was filming the little narration parts, I actually left out one of my favorite parts of the show, which is telly. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the Matilda musical, Mr. Wormwood sings a song during intermission to the audience, basically making fun of them. And for our version, we had the main curtain closed and the entire cast just danced back there. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> And then I change into my travel clothes. So I have this really long leopard 
print trench coat. We also still had the leopard print leggings. So lots definitely clashed. Definitely too much of that pattern. And then this really frilly pink scarf. This is probably one of my favorite costumes because it's really comfy and I can cheat because it's my last costume of the show. So I'm just wearing my regular clothes underneath it. I just loved everything about these costumes. I've always loved costumes with this company. And then we did curtain call and it was over. So yeah, the show ended. I changed back into my regular clothes and it was time for strike. We did it. We finished the show. It's strike right now. I just peed and it was a really good run. Um, I have to go help clean things up now. Strike, for those of you who don't know, is when everybody helps clean up all the dressing rooms, take down set pieces, put all the props away, load things into the back of trucks, throw things away, peel tape off the stage, basically return the theater to the clean glory that it was before we loaded everything in for this production. We should be able to leave after Strike as if the show never happened. Goodbye, Shelby. Goodbye, Shelby. That was closing night of Matilda the Musical. Playing a character who is so in tuned in her body when I, I am, I am me, was difficult <laughs> to say the least. It was just such a fun show. Our director was one of the most amazing directors I've ever worked with. I genuinely believe I am a better performer because of the show, because of her as our director, or just the incredible castmates that I got to work with. In my rule book, if you come out of a show feeling fulfilled, feeling like you've made good connections with the people around you, feeling like it genuinely made you a better performer, that is a successful production. It was just an incredible experience. I'm so very grateful for it. But yeah, that is the end of this video. If you're not a theater person, maybe it gave you a sneak peek into what happens behind the scenes and what it's like actually being in a production. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in next week's video. Bye!